Um, the charts will tell you on a high probability. There's nothing There's nothing certain because things change, right? You could have really good news today and bad news tomorrow. But um, the charts will tell you, you'll be able to start to see, okay, this is some signs that things are starting to reverse. And I jump in long before the big up move happens. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to Watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Well, you're going to get some trading advice today from somebody who lost everything five times, but now makes two to 400% per year. His name is Tony Polak. Tony, great to have you on. And I should also mention that the site where you find Tony at, and the link will be in the show notes, reallifetrading.com. If you got a question, comment, you can email me, kl at kerrylutz.com. Whether about trading or anything else, economic or any other questions you might have on your mind, Tony, it's great to have you on. So a, a normal person would have quit probably after the first time they went bust the first or second time. Certainly uh, very few people would have hold out doing that five times. How did you keep going in the midst of all that defeat? Oh man. Yeah. That's, I figured out I was not normal. That's what I learned from that experience for sure. Thanks so much for having me on, by the way. Um, sure. you know, I just, I, I felt like, like I was being called to trade and that's one of the reasons why I didn't give up. Um, but I really didn't have, like, I got rid of every other avenue. Like this was my only path. There were, there was no backup plan to really fall back to. So I had to make it work. I think that's what kind of stuck me, kept me in the game long enough to to finally find some success. Uh, but look, if you could make it trading, there's probably a half a dozen, a dozen other ways you could have made it. Something about trading uh, really made you keep going. Correct. I, I ran a family business for quite a few years before that, and I managed a lot of employees. And I love the fact with trading that I could do it anywhere. It was just me, right? It was just, I only relied on myself. And there was a few things that just kind of uh, gravitated me towards trading. So um, that's why I chose this career. And that's why I was so passionate to stick through it. Plus, I love the markets. All right. I love them too. I have ever since I was a little kid. But uh, hey, in this day of AI, I mean, we even have an AI bot taking notes on this interview now for our show notes. Can the individual really compete against the bots? Yes, because you don't have to compete against them. You can join them. Um, and there are, you know, there's two teams in trading. Everyone says the game is rigged and it is rigged. But the, here's the catch. You can choose what team you can you want to be on. You can choose the winning team or the losing team. And that's what people don't realize. Um, AI, all it's designed to do, institutional traders, all the big money is designed to play on people's emotions. If, if you get a million people in a room, it's really hard to predict what they're going to do. If you can get all million people to feel the same emotion, it's very likely they're going to do the same thing, right? If smoke starts to fill the, fill the auditorium and then fire alarm goes off, odds are you can get a whole lot of people to do the same thing. And that's all the game really is. The thing is, people don't even realize there is a game. They're showing up and they're immediately being part of the big crowd and the big crowd is always going to lose. And so they're playing on your emotions now and you're just going to struggle to, to survive. And so again, if you compete against it, you are in the 90% that's going to fail. Instead, you can join the winning team and start thinking about the markets differently and start thinking, all right, what are the majority of people doing right now? Well, the markets are screaming up. They're all going to buy. They all have that confirmation. This feels easy. People love to buy when it's already going up because it makes them believe it's going to continue to do that. In reality that's where all the big money's taking their profits. They're selling it to everyone else, knowing it's getting ready to pull back. And so just little things like that of knowledge of that's what I do. I teach people how to be different. Um, I went through the whole gauntlet so they don't have to, right? And so I average a few thousand hours a year just showing people like, hey, don't think this way. You need to start viewing it this way. Just little tweaks that really make a big difference in finally being successful in the markets. 
All right. So one of my favorite little memes is live life as if it's rigged in your favor. So certainly this would be one day, one way of going about that. Uh, what do you, uh, you know, what do you buy? How do you know what to buy and how do you know when to sell and vice versa, sell and then buy? Yeah. Price action. Um, the charts will tell you on a high probability. There's nothing as, There's nothing certain because things change, right? You could have really good news today and bad news tomorrow, but um, the charts will tell you, you'll be able to start to see, okay, this is some signs that things are starting to reverse. And I jump in long before the big up move happens based on certain sentiments that I'm looking for and certain tools and, and things that I, that I use. But I'm a big price action trader. So the charts tell me, first off, where I'm wrong. I'll look at this and go, this is a level the bulls have to hold. So as long as they hold that level, I'll stay in the trade. And that allows me to control my risk and to lose small. It's just a game of math, right? You were flipping a coin on heads, you get $1,000 on tails, you pay me 300 bucks. You can flip it as many times as you want. The math works because when you're right, you're making way more than the opposite side of the coin when you're wrong. So I'm setting my risk where if I am wrong, again, it's a probability. I'm putting high probabilities that it'll go up but I know exactly where I'm wrong based on the charts. And so if the charts tell me, hey, it gets below this, I'm wrong, I cut my losses. Everyone else, the crowd, the 90%, they hope it turns around and they end up turning a small loss into a big loss. And then when I'm right, I ride that thing out as far as I can. I make a lot of money doing that. Everyone else, they're up $300. Like I made that in 10 minutes, I'm getting out, this is amazing. And what they're doing is they're guaranteed they lose, they lose big and they win small and the math just keeps going against them. So. The answer to that question would be price action. It'll show you when to get in. It'll tell you an, a really good idea of where the majority of the algorithms and the big institutional traders will start taking their profits. And I just try to follow them in what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, so what's the market telling you now? What are the charts telling you? Oh man, great question. We're at a pretty key spot right now. Uh, 420 level is very, very crucial. We're at the spot where either the bulls should step back in and push this thing back up to an all-time high. That's what I'm expecting at the moment. If we start taking out certain levels and closing below that, um, that would tell me the bulls didn't step in. So again, that's kind of how I can get an early indication of if the bulls don't step in, all the institutional traders are thinking the same thing. They're cutting their losses, they're getting out, they're gonna start shorting and that's what I'll be doing too. So we're at that moment in the markets where over the next three weeks, we're either going to decide if we're going to really keep finding some bulls and, and keep pushing all-time highs, or if this party is already over with and we're getting ready to retest last year's lows. It's sitting right on that verge, and I don't know. I just have a game plan for either scenario, and I'll see which one plays out. So are you invested now, or are you just sitting back and waiting? I am invested. Yep. So I, um, I do a lot of option trading. So I bought a lot actually last week at my key area when we got down to the 420 area. And then I personally, I buy a lot of insurance on the markets. I buy a lot of put options on the market. And what that does is it gives me that two or three month cushion to see, okay, now I can wait three or four weeks to see if we're going to bounce. If not, then my insurance will ensure that I lose very, very small. And if I'm right, then cool, I'm going to lose small on the insurance compared to what my overall position is going to win on, on the upside. Okay. So, uh, like how much money you need to use your system? Yeah. Um, really it's, I work with people that have a million dollar trading accounts all the way down to a thousand dollars. Um, it's more of what percent returns are you going to get? So I shoot for, and I average five to 10% a month on average. Some months are 60%, some months are losing months. Um, but five to 10% is a month is what I try to get my students to. So if you, have a thousand dollars, you know, you'll make five to ten percent of that. If you have a million dollars, you make five to ten percent of that. So it's really more of you can use any number. Really, you can throw in there. Technically, you could have two hundred dollars and do this. Um, but of course, the larger the number, the easier it is to trade. There are more options out there for you, um, and more methods for you to use to make money. But also, um, the return is a lot higher. Uh, so, what's been your biggest success so far? Biggest trade? Biggest trade. Um, I would say last year I ended up buying, um, buying some puts at the start of last year and I tripled my trading account within the first five months of last year. So, um, that was one of my best trading years so far of just 
again, the, the charts told me a key level was broke. The second week in January, I just waited for my entry, had my setups, took it, and then rode that thing all the way down throughout the year. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so buying options, a little tricky. Uh, you know, it's hard to know whether you're paying too large a premium or the premiums at a discount. How do you value options? Yeah. Um, so options really come down to, it's a, it's a whole other game inside of a game. Um, really the, the quick question is once everyone's seeing the same thing, it's too late. I want to be buying options when no one's thinking about a bull move, right? When no one's thinking about a bear move, that's the time to grab it. And again, it's all about reading price action. They'll give you those clues. And then you're either right or you're wrong off of those clues. There's nothing guaranteed. So I just, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong all the time, by the way, I take small losses. And when I'm right, I win big. So when reading options, it's more of figuring out is is the move already happening, right? Go back to a, a you can look at the previous price of the option itself and you'll see it's like, oh, okay, it was at a dollar two days ago. Now it's at $3. So I could get in now because it could go to six, but I have to realize that people already bought this at a dollar. They've already 3X their money. You know, am I late to the party? And so that's what I use a lot is the key is I want to get in. I want to be buying insurance before there's a hurricane type thing, right? And so then selling that to someone else. And that's the game of options really, but it requires a knowledge of how the markets work a little bit to be successful. Okay. Uh, so, uh, interesting, uh, interesting thing here, Grip. These options, uh, they don't always reflect the reality though, do they? The price, sometimes price will go way up in the underlying security and they lag in the options. Uh, you know, you could be right, but you could be wrong. Right. If you don't understand how options work, you, you'll set yourself up to to fail, really. Because if you buy, this is the easiest way to think about it. A um, few analogies. If you um, if you buy insurance, let's say for a hurricane, but your insurance only applies if the winds get above 180 miles an hour or 250 miles an hour, and the hurricane comes in at 80 mile an hour winds, your house still gets destroyed. You had insurance, but it didn't cover what you what actually the damage that happened, right? We see that a lot in like car insurance, right? Like you you didn't have insurance for a tree dropping on top of your car. So it's the same thing in the markets. People buy options way too far out of the money, which means the not only do they have to be correct, but the markets have to make an abnormally large move in that direction for them to even really be at break even by expiration. So I teach my students, you want to be buying your options a lot closer in strike. So there's a higher probability, right? Don't buy hurricane insurance with a wind cut off. Just buy the insurance for anything mm -hmm. to cover you. So that's one of the best ways to do it. But people mess up the most by, they go the cheapest route, which means the option furthest out of the money. And then when they're right, they're like, oh, the market's worked. Um, you know, in my direction, they still don't make any money because it didn't go far enough. Um, the, the second kind of analogy is, if you're in a baseball stadium and you know outside that stadium, the hot dog's $2 on the street vendor, it's two bucks. You go inside the ballpark, it's $8. Um, if you're trying to buy options to make money right before earnings, there's a volatility that goes in. There's a, there's a higher premium on price because they're expecting a large move right before earnings. So that's like you going into the ballpark, buying 20 hot dogs for $8, going on the street and trying to sell them for 20 bucks. It's a really hard way to make a living because you're paying too much for that option from the get-go. Mm -hmm. That option might be worth $2 normally, but because of earnings, it's seven. So after earnings is over with, that option goes back to the normal market price. So even if the market's made a big move in your direction, it might only be worth $5, but you paid seven for it. So you still lose. So those are the two scenarios of, that I commonly see people, why they, they lose money in options. It's more of a matter of understanding how the game is played. And, and how to apply the option at the right time, you'll be successful. So um, what options do you usually buy? Do you buy them on the stocks or the indices? How's that work? Yeah, I buy them on um, any stock that gives me, first things first, you've got to diagnose the markets, right? Um, options are just a tool to make money. It's not the thing that actually is going to make you money. What's going to make you money is diagnosing the problem. Are the markets about to go up or are they about to go down? Or are they going to go sideways, right? Um, once you have a diagnosis of the markets, um, that's what I teach everyone to do first things first, diagnose the markets, learn how to read price action. I teach it. He messages me. I'll give you a whole bunch of free stuff um, to learn how to do that. Once you know how to do that, then 
it's now a matter of, okay, it's, it's going to go down. I want to buy these options that make money when it goes down. So I do it on any stock or any indice that I have a clear diagnosis of where I think this is going to go. The majority of my money would come from selling options though. I would say that's the easiest way to be consistent. Um, because 90% of the people are going to lose that trade options, I'm the one selling it to them. So I have a 90% win rate. I win when everyone else loses type thing. Um, in that sense, it kind of sounds weird because that's not really how it plays out because they could sell it beforehand and everything else. It's just, I'm taking advantage of, I'm buying that hurricane insurance when it's not season and I'm selling it to someone that didn't have it right before the season starts for a higher premium than what I sold it for type thing. Mm-hmm. So that's how I'm making a good chunk of my money is just by selling options. You selling covered uh, calls and such or? Yeah. 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 yeah I'll do covered calls. I do a lot of naked puts. My my main go-to is credit spreads because mm-hmm. it doesn't require a lot of capital. I have people that have a couple thousand dollars in their account that make $300 a week just on a couple credit spread trades because, again, it doesn't require a lot of margin from your broker, a lot of money from you, but yet you can still take all the benefits of selling options with a really high win rate. You doing any energy uh, options at all? I, I have not. Um, I have not really dabbled into that. I could. Um, I stick. I do a lot of spy trading. So the ETF. Um, and then I'll do a lot of higher volatility stocks. Um, I, the tech stocks are always fantastic. Always have been Tesla and a lot of those things. But I'll dabble in things. I just haven't really gotten into to energy too much. All right. Well, I think you've given us a, a good a good background and uh, we'll definitely have you on again to talk more about it. In the meantime, uh, how do you get started in trading with you? Yeah. Um, for your listeners, I've actually created just a step-by-step process of how to do all these things I just talked about for free. So if they want to go to reallifetrading.com slash Tony Pollock is where they can find that step-by-step. You can also go to reallifetrading.com to figure out some more education for free. Um, we're all about just giving back and that's all I want to do is is help people yeah. give back and learn this and stop making the same mistakes that everyone always makes. Um, yeah. So that's, that's, that's what I want to do. There you can find it. All right. Well, the link is in the show notes to this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Make sure you sign up for your free newsletter. Questions, comments, I'm always here for you. Uh, the email address is kl at kerrylutz.com. Um, use the, uh, use the uh, comment section in the YouTube uh, if you're watching it there to give us some feedback on what you think and how your experience has worked on trading options. If you've traded options, let us know. And if you haven't, let us know why not. Hey, Tony, appreciate you coming on. We'll definitely have you on again. Be well. And my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.